Drawing with Conan. Today we're going to draw an iguana. Let's get started. Paper and landscape. We use the red marker because we're going to draw lines we're going to erase. Start with an oval in the upper left hand corner of your paper. There we go. Now you're going to draw a line right across the inside of that oval. Give us a good idea where his mouth will be. Then we draw the spine line starting with the neck, curve out for the back, keep it kind of flat, then curve down, give us an idea where that tail will be. And there we have it, our basic iguana skeleton. Now, black marker, that means these are lines that I draw and I won't erase unless I mess something up. That's why we always draw with something we can erase in case we mess up. Just erase it and try again. Three curved lines. They curve up away from the oval, but they follow the curve of the oval. Like that. This one comes out a little bit more. Comes out because it starts his snout, which we round off here. There's his nose. Now we bring the line back for a smile. There we go. He's a happy-go-lucky iguana, I suppose. The rest of the snout curved down and come out. He's got a big jowly cheek. Now this cheek has a little curve up there. Shows where the jaw is. That's where we've got our happy iguana face starting up. Now erase some of those red lines in the face. They've guided us long enough, and now they'll only get in our way. If you erase some of the permanent lines you drew, it's okay. Just draw them back in. And just about finished. There we go. Oh, there's a little bit. Yep, there we go. Now we continue with some face details. We're going to have two lines here on his forehead. There's little wrinkles. And then we've got a dot for his nostril. And now he's got these weird ovals on the bottom of his cheek. One large one. And then right in front of it, touching it, a very small one. And then one just a little bit bigger that's touching both of the ovals. There we go. Now we're going to work on the eye. We start with the lower part of the eye slightly up curved line and then we do a rainbow curve on the top of that line now we do two curves on the side like parentheses and then a line in the middle for the pupil and there's our reptile eye oh and don't forget the little fold at the bottom of his bottom eyelid and there we go our iguana face is in good shape now, we're going to work on the waddle. Start with three jagged lines down. There we go. And then that line comes back up. It's the beginning of the waddle. Underneath their chin and neck. Then they've got two large... They kind of look like shopping bags full of sand. There's one. And right next to it, one a little bit bigger, and there's a piece of skin that connects them. And we're going to bring all those lines up more on the neck. And there, here we go, and that one too. There we go, that's a great looking waddle. This is going to be part of the chest, just a little bit. Now we're going to start on its front leg. Start with the upper part, that shoulder there. Curve down kind of like an S. Now remember earlier I was talking about messing up. I mess up this leg pretty good in a little while, but I just erase it and make it look better. This back line specifically. 
Now, the thing about iguanas is they have really weird claws. They have a really long middle finger with a big claw on it, and then the other fingers are kind of shorter. It's a little hard to explain, but if you follow along with the lines I'm drawing, you should be able to come up with a pretty good iguana claw. If it looks weird, you're probably doing it right. Remember that the fingers kind of overlap a little bit because of perspective. And there we go. Just keep on remember it's a claw. So you're going to have a curve on the top and a curve on the bottom of each finger at the point. And now we get to the back of that foot there, and I'm not too happy with it. I'm going to change it. And like I said, that's okay. Sometimes you don't get the line right the first time. He's still looking pretty awesome, though. Now, let's fix that back line of that leg. Erase. And redraw. Yeah, I'm already happier with that. There we go. Now I've got, like, almost half an iguana. Now we're going to start on these spikes on the back of the head. First, we're going to draw where the spikes meet his skin, similar to the lines we did at the beginning of the head. I like to call these scallop lines. As they go back, they get a little bit smaller. And then we want to draw some of that tail in, too. I also wasn't very happy with how my tail was during this drawing, so I redo it a couple times. And like I said, that's fine. If you gotta redo a line, redo the line. That's what erasers are made for, and I'm thankful for them. Now we start drawing in these spikes, just two lines, one up and one back down. Up and back down. They're pretty big on the top of his head, and then they get smaller as they go back. But you can even do some different sizes, and it's going to look natural. It also makes them look pretty punk rock, if I do say so myself. There we go. All the way down, and then once we get to the end of these scalloped lines we drew, if you notice, each of these spikes fits in one of those little curves we drew on the back. But his tail turns, so eventually we have to recognize that with the way we draw the spikes. So if you notice, I erase a little bit more, and I draw that spike in front of the line that represents the back of the tail. And that's the beginning of those spikes turning around on the tail. Looking pretty cool so far. So once again, wasn't happy with that leg. Could be better. So I erase it. And I draw it again. There we go. Now he's got a defined elbow. Now we start on his belly. Line straight across there. A little bit of a curve. Now we're going to start on his back leg. It's real lumpy. But it's not that lumpy. There we go. That's more like it. That curve up shows the top of his hip. There's the back of his hip. And his lumpy calf. And then we've got the tail that comes in front of it. I'm not very happy with this tail. I'm going to change it. Just erase and redraw. I think that's a little bit better. It's a little skinny, though. Let's get these claws in here for the back foot. 
shorter claws than those claws in the front. We don't see as many of them because of the tail. Now let's get rid of those guidelines. Erase, erase, erase. We don't need any of the guidelines anymore. We've almost gotten a finished iguana there. Eh, I think I want to redo that tail. Yeah, let's redo that tail. A race. It's got to be a little bigger than that. There we go. There's an iguana tail for you. They are very long, and they come down to a point. There, I'm much happier with that tail. And that's basically an iguana. We gotta put a little detail in there. A couple more of these spikes going down the tail. See, now they're in the middle of the tail because the tail curves around. You draw them just like you would draw sharp teeth. Except they're pointing up instead of pointing down like vampire teeth would. There we go, and they get smaller and smaller. Now we got a couple more details that we still have to put in there. Some little folds on the leg and the tail and the body. There we go. See now we can see where his belly is and where his back is. There's some little knee folds and a little curly cue on this elbow. I think that's pretty fun. And we want to make sure to get all the lines of those claws. There we go. Looking pretty good. Yeah, that's a whole iguana. Now you could stop there. That's a full-on iguana. Or you can take it a step further. We're going to do some background here. First we want to draw a horizon line. That shows us where the ground is. Shows us the iguana isn't just standing in midair. This iguana is pretty cool, but he can't float. So now I'm drawing a tree back here. Two lines going up. And there's a couple branches there. And coming down, we're gonna have another branch on this side. I think this tree will have a little hollow in it. What's in there? I don't know. This is definitely where you get to make the picture your own. If you don't wanna put a tree in like this, if you want to do a jungle tree, go for it. If you want your iguana to be on the beach, maybe it's one of those swimming iguanas from the Galapagos Islands, you could do that. I chose to do a forest. I'm gonna put some little tufts of grass there. And one on the other side. Just filling in the space, making it more interesting. But like I said, this part, you can do your own thing. We just want to make sure that iguana is somewhere, not just floating on a blank piece of paper. Well, blank except for the iguana, of course. <laughs> Putting some bark lines in there. You just want to do some wavy lines, and every once in a while, you do a little curvy or a swirl. Represents the bark. There we go. Now we got a little tree. double thumbs up that's awesome I'm loving it I hope you guys love it too or at least liked it or enjoyed it thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time and draw again peace